The Expansion Zone with Sonia Barrett. Everybody's talking about consciousness. Everybody wants that eternal kiss. <laughs> Everyone's saying there's more than this. Everyone wants to follow their own bliss. Talking about one love. On the Expansion Zone, we examine life and our quest to understand who and what we are and of the vastness of human potentials. We explore the making of our world from quantum physics to parapsychology, health, sociology, and philosophy, along with practical living. You are reminded of the possibilities in creating personal change. So for an hour, we'll stimulate and expand the mind. Well, welcome once again to the Expansion Zone with Sonia Barrett. I am, of course, Sonia Barrett, your host. And uh, let's first of all say thank you. Uh, that's a thank you from me here at the Expansion Zone and also KPFK for your continued support uh, during this past fun drive. And I think it's very encouraging because it at least it lets us know that we want more. That's what you're saying. When you support the station, it's we want more. So I'm excited to uh, to be part of that in bringing you more. And uh, that's what we're going to do today is bring you some more amazing guests with amazing information. Well, of course, we all know that we are in that season, that time of year where um you know, the major holidays are here. We're, you know, we're, okay, I'm not really going to include Halloween. <laughs> we're not really going to include that one. Okay, but from Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving and then uh, whatever you celebrate, Christmas, even if you don't celebrate it, you're in the season. You're you're part of, of that season and leading into New Year's for, um, you know, for the, for the new year coming in. And the, the fact is that, Many people are triggered. They're experiencing different levels of emotions. Not everyone is in that space of, of joy and, and thrill and loving the season. And, and a good part of that is because of reminders, reminders of loss, uh, sometimes loneliness, Sometimes the review of of one's life over the last year, not you know feeling as if you you did enough, uh, maybe being concerned about entering into the new year, it, you know it's so many different things. And sometimes people try to put on a happy face, but you have no idea how they're feeling on the inside. So today, I I thought it'd be great to have a, a discussion with my guest, and and the topic is going to be. Converting your pain into usable emotional currency, moving from a space of lack. Well, we don't really hear that term, you know, used quite often, but it's one I use a lot. And it's emotional currency because we don't realize that uh, just the way we spend money, we, we spend our emotions, we spend our feelings, just like we say, we spend spending life or spending your time. But uh, it sort of goes by us. So so this is why I, f- I phrased it that way. It's, it's what we invest in. So I wanted to talk about how we can convert uh, those emotions that we're feeling, the maybe the the pain that that you might be silently feeling, the loneliness, the the lack in some way or another. How can we convert that into usable uh, emotions to propel us forward? So we're gonna. It's just probably gonna be a little bit more of a dialogue today because my guest today, I love chatting with her, uh, Lisa Scott. And uh, there's there's so many great insights that she presents. So a bit about Lisa. Lisa Scott is a mother, wife, metaphysician, author, speaker, and blogger as seen in Huffington Post and Mind Body Network. 
Lisa experienced a shift years ago when she began to understand that we have the power to change our own thoughts and therefore change our lives, and went on to pursue a bachelor's degree in metaphysical spiritual counseling. Lisa is the creator of the process called. Leverage your pain and leverage your values, and specializes in helping women business owners clear emotional blocks to success. Lisa also helps children and adolescents uncover what you love, not what you think you have to do. Lisa is also the author of the free ebook "When You've Tried Everything Except Yourself: Six Steps to Move." Beyond your past experiences and programs, and step into your own. Well, in her bio, she says a whole lot of great target points here. So I can't wait to、uh, bring her in. What was it she said right here? I just read it and I wanted to <laughs> to repeat it before I bring her in.、Uh, I don't see it right now, but anyway, Lisa Scott, welcome to the Expansion Zone. Thank you so much, Sonia. Love being here. Love chatting with you always. <laughs> I'm, excited. I'm excited to see how this goes because I love the fact that you changed it to a dialogue, and I know how much we、uh, get from one another when we. Have a dialogue, right? We'll be dialoguing, but you'll probably you'll be doing most of the talking. <laughs> oh, that's cool with me. <laughs> oh my gosh! But、uh, yeah, so so Lisa, this this morning I I said to you, I, I kind of contacted you, and I said, you know, I'm kind of feeling this topic, and you go, yes, and this <laughs> this is the ideal time, and、uh, I think maybe we should probably. Just sort of begin by even just discussing that idea of the season and people's emotional responses to,、um, in reaction to the holidays, that dreaded feeling of, you know, loss or, or loneliness.、Uh, have you experienced that with not necessarily for yourself, but in terms of other people that you have come in contact with, dreading the holidays? Oh yes, absolutely. I'm around a lot of people that dread the holidays for various reasons, and you know, I can think of a time, you know, when I was a little girl, because I went from celebrating the holidays to not celebrating the holidays, back to celebrating the holidays. But one of the things that sticks out to me about the celebration of the holidays when I was a little girl is I didn't understand. That there was so much that I was wrapping up and wrapping around the holiday season because the holiday season brings with it a vibration, you know, a vibration of very familiar things, things that we're attached to, people, things that we tend to do because of tradition.、Um, so it brings with it, you know, so much more than just you know a Christmas tree or gifts or. You know, it brings so much with it, and we're not necessarily aware of the attachments that we're creating. You know, when we're hol- celebrating holiday seasons, and you know, we're we're participating in the various traditions that we participate in. But I noticed with myself as a little girl that one of the things that jumped out to me.、Um, so I, it's amazing to me that I was always, you know, paying attention to my. Thoughts and paying attention to how I feel and how those things connect, but I would always feel so devastated, Sonia, the day after Christmas was over. And the reason why was because of all of the things that I just mentioned, all of the attachment, all of the,、um, you know, what was perceived as happiness that was just being,、um, you know, we were happy generally all the time, but there was something very special about that feeling. You know, around Christmas time, so that when that was over, or or the perception of it was over, it it felt like a big old letdown to me. <laughs> And you're right. <laughs> like, what's going on with this? Like, you know, <laughs> I, all these people are 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 walking around and they're happy and they're singing and they're doing all these wonderful things, and then it seemed like the day after. It was over, like <laughs> <laughs> back to normal. <laughs> you know, back to our regularly scheduled program or something. <laughs> And it was. You're right about that. You said it just right. Right back to our regularly scheduled program, and that was 
the holidays was all part of, of, of that experience anyway. And the expectations, Lisa, also. There's so many expectations around the holidays, too, that are, you know, that people feel, um, uh, what, what should I say, stressed by. Yes, and that, that are leading up to, just like, you know, you're saying and I'm saying, you know, you, if you're used to your family coming in for the, you know, to visit from somewhere else or, you know, you're used to uh, certain traditions that your family has and those things are no longer happening, those people are no longer there, um, you know, all of these things we're, we're not consciously aware until, you know, uh, certain things have shifted or changed or, you know, whatever the, the circumstance or case may be with the individual um, the holidays because of, you know, the, um, the energy, you know, we know that everything is a form of communication and the form of communication that comes with the holiday season is, um, you know, is what it is. And people really pick up on, you know, what that entails for them, you know, for everybody, for every family, it's different. I mean, generally it's, it tends to, you know, at least in the United States, Generally, the the um, form of communication is very f- familiar to hundreds of thousands of people. You know how we translate what the the communication of this season means to us. It's it's familiar to so many people, um, and and we're just you know not necessarily consciously. I mean, we're aware of the the feeling of the hurt and pain when something has shifted and changed, but our connection to the things that we become attached to. And that, um, you know, I like how you put it in in a previous conversation we uh, have had, and people might not have heard it like this, but the things we become possessed by, our possessions, (laughs) you know, the things that possess us. It's not about, you know, some, uh, you know, monstrous thing when we're talking about possession. We're talking about those things that bind you to it um, and it to you. And, um, you know, in terms of what that is defined by, it is that terminology called possession. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And also, um, we, we want to get the flip side of there are those people who where maybe it's not happening and they miss it. But they're also the people who don't want to participate. But there's guilt. They don't want to be bothered with the family and doing any of it. So, so there is, there is this, this, this thing that, um, that people are silently experiencing in one way or another. Um, they're exper- they, they could be experiencing something. And you're right. And it is a high, uh, at that time of year. It's a high for those people who, um, are, are you know, looking forward to participating in that high. And in a way, it's a little bit of an escape too, because for those few, weeks or for that period of time, there you are, you're in this high, and then you're not. Then you cross over, what, into uh, the first of the year, (laughs) the first of January, or maybe the second of January, and now there you are. You're back preparing for Mm -hmm. the end of the year again, for the season again. It it, it is kind of wild. Yeah, and it, and it, and as you're talking, I'm like, but look at that. Look at look at the opportunity. You know, when uh, you know, if one desires to, uh, you know, become more aware and or um, take a step back from, you know, um, the feelings that they could potentially be having, you could just pay attention to that process right there alone and get so much from it. The fact that. You know, um, the season brings with it, you know, certain things, and then it shifts over to something else. There's such a big, huge understanding, you know, an opportunity for understanding about how, you know, spaces and time are bringing, you know, certain information with it, certain forms of communication and a certain way of being that we can say, wait a minute. You can make a decision as to whether or not you want to participate in that, you know, right? (laughs) one way or the other. And, and, um, you know, if you've made a decision that you don't want to participate in that whole, you know, it's one thing, one minute, and then the next thing it's not, um, you can certainly choose to do that. And, you know, that's where I think a huge opportunity lies for a lot of people who might otherwise feel like they don't have it, there's no choice when this time comes 
You know, there is there actually is a choice. You can choose not to participate in that whole process, understanding that it is simply that it, it's it's something that's going to come and go. But um, it's a perceptual thing as well. It's all caught up in our perception of that time frame, and we can choose to release ourselves from that as well. So we don't have to participate if we don't want to. Right, and it's the it's the guilt. It's the being able to let go um, of the guilt and really look at, uh, as Lisa was saying, as look at this as an opportunity. It's an opportunity. Maybe this is a great way to enter this the new cycle, changed, changed from the sense of being able to actually say, you know what, I am okay if everyone is upset with me, but. In this moment, I am going to choose me. I am going to choose to do what feels um, that that aligns with me, and this is what aligns with me right now is not participating. And I think that's the part that people really have to be able to be okay with. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, the the guilt is very major um, for people in in many different ways. Oh, yeah, because I remember when I wasn't um, celebrating, you know, my family or people around me, it's like, what? You know, you're not celebrating, you know, (laughs) because for years, you know, with my now, you know, I could take it or leave it. But I understand, you know what I mean? I could take it or leave it. I could celebrate or not celebrate. And that's the beautiful thing about that's the beautiful thing or the, the beautiful. I love being in a space of having a choice about it. Because I have been in a place where, you know, you you do feel that guilt because you have, you know, it, it's like accepting a, um, um, it's like be careful of the agreements you sign because you're going to need to live with and function by those agreements and every, uh, you know, person, situation, scenario that comes along with that agreement when you are no longer functioning within that agreement along with everyone else, now everyone's looking at you like, what the heck is your problem? You know, <laughs> you, you once agreed with this just like we did, or we, you once were okay with this just like we were. What's going on with you? You know, right. and, and even those people have an opportunity to understand that people have a choice. You know, I, I, I just think it's amazing because a lot of times we're not, we are really not thinking we have a choice about these things. Right. And, and, and of course, the reason why other people get upset when you step away is because it shakes their world as well. And that's what we need to understand. It shakes their world and they don't have maybe this, what it, you know, what it takes to step away if they wanted to. And now you've sort of interfered with this, this pattern of, of behavior uh, that they manage to, you know, to do. So it's, you know, it's, it's like anything else, anything else, your religion, the more people believe in something, you know, the, 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 the more, um, what, pr- profound or more believable it is for each individual. That's why we always have to recruit more people <laughs> into our belief system. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You're, you're shaking the very foundation of you know, what their, uh, you know, what their life is, you know, and, and how they have uh, self-identified and defined who they are without, you know, necessarily paying any attention to that, except when you come along and do something different. Now, now they're paying attention, you know. Yeah. And then they're upset with you for causing them to have to pay attention. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 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 <laughs> uh, we are we are such funny creatures, human beings. We are just such funny, strange, interesting, and and lovable creatures all at the same time. But everything we're sort of saying is um, what it means to to convert your pain to usable uh, emotional currency. And so far, everything that we're saying, we're, we've been sort of pointing out. Um, some of these things. Now we can look at people who are in pain based on loss, whether it be, it could be a divorce, it could be some sort of separation, it could be loss of job, it could be, you know, loss of a loved one. E- either way, you know, loss is loss and, um, we each measure it 
uh, differently. It's, it, it's, it's, it's high on the Richter scale for some people in certain things that would appear to be small to us, but nonetheless, it's, it's still loss. So it's converting exactly. that. Exactly. And, you know, speaking of, you know, uh, converting, uh, pain to usable, uh, currency, um, I, I just noticed how you and I, when we're speaking, we laugh a lot. And that's something that I know when I first uh, came into your space and we began to be around each other more and we would talk about things and we would just start cracking up laughing. <laughs> and, and, you know, it just, it just would tickle us that, you know, we, uh, you know, just like you said, how we as human beings process things and, you know, what was once so detrimental and so, you know, uh, just filling our lives every day, all day with whatever the, I'll, I'll use the terminology, burden was at that point in time. And then when you, um, you know, are able to stop, you know, take an objective look at that and, you know, learn what you're going to learn and move on from that and you're able to laugh, you know, I believe that that's part, uh, a huge part of how we're able to take and uh, convert uh, that pain into something usable because of course laughter what is it said that laughter is one of the best medicines that there are mm-hmm. that it that it is for um you know helping the body um that right there i just noticed that we're doing it and um i think it's important for people to witness it and the reason why is because everybody's so serious all the time <laughs> everything is yeah. so serious and and I understand that we are talking about what, what can be perceived to be some very complex, because when you hear the word pain, you know, depending on uh, where you're at in your understanding of it, if you're going through it, you know, it can feel so weighty and, uh, you know, weigh a person down. Um, however, when you start to understand, you know, as we were talking in the very beginning, That pain is simply another form of communication. Uh, that's how I like to look at it. And a lot of, a lot of times, no sooner than I say that to my client, when I say, you know, pain is simply another form of communication. And it is, if you are able to turn around and take a look at that pain in an objective manner, it will begin to communicate to you what it is that you desire from that space of pain that you're going through that you may not want to, that you're that you're more than likely resisting, which is causing even more pain and more momentum to that pain. Um, you know, if you're able to stop and turn around and take a look at it, it it will speak to you. It is already speaking to you what it is that you want that is on the opposite end of the spectrum of the thing that you're going through. And I, I just find it very fascinating <laughs> that the very thing that we try to um, escape, deny, affirm away, turn away from, ignore, is one of the very things that's speaking to us about what it is that we want. <laughs> what right. it is that we actually um, are preferring in that moment in time versus what we're going through. Absolutely. I, I just find it very fascinating. Absolutely. And uh, w- what you said brings to mind, because basically in there, this is what you're, you're also saying, is that we live by protocols and behavior that is considered acceptable. And I think people sometimes, even in grief, you get caught up in uh, what is acceptable behavior even during uh, a grieving period? You know, what are the, the protocols? So deep down, there might be a part of you that really wants to come out and uh, maybe laugh a little bit, but maybe you feel bad about doing that. I mean, it's so, so many things that seem, they're so silly, but it's amazing how there are people who are experiencing even just that. Is it okay for me to do this? Because I am supposed to be grieving. I am supposed to be doing. So there's all these supposed to things and supposed to, those things are based on the social protocols or maybe even the protocols in our family or, you know, expectations of um, our, our environment. 
so all of those things I think are important for us to understand how, you know, how we march to the beat of somebody else's drum more times than we think. Wow, Sonia, that is, I, I, that is absolutely, that's awesome that you said that and very, very important because I can remember different, you know, times of pain that You know, I'll just use this terminology for lack of a better way of putting it, but different um, spaces in time where I was going through different types of pain that required something different at that moment in time. And, you know, I had to stop and listen to my body and listen to what my body was telling me it wanted. Um, So just like you're saying, if if your body is telling you that you want to laugh more, you just want to turn on the television and listen to your favorite comedian or, you know, just watch the comedy channel back to back to back and just laugh, then that's what it is, you know. And I love that you said that, that we're so caught up or society is so, you know, trying to tell us all the time how something is supposed to go. And if it doesn't look that way, then it's not the right way. You know, I remember uh, one time where I was sitting sitting in my car and I just felt like I wanted to scream at the top of my lungs. <laughs> <laughs> Been there. <laughs> Initially, I the first reaction I had was just what we're talking about. Are you crazy? Like, because I had never done anything like that before. But then I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. And I was sitting by the water in Atlantic City in my car. And I just did it. And when I was done, Sonia, I felt, oh, my goodness, the weight that came off of me was incredible. But then there was another time where all I did was cry. But I could feel the release that was exiting my body as I allowed that to happen and didn't hold back and try to act like I was strong and, you know, all of these <laughs> yes. things that we try to do because, you know, we're we're being told that, you know, uh, crying is a form of, uh, not, you know, being weak, when in actuality, you not listening to your body is going to make you weaker. It's going to it's going to tear you up in other ways that you can't even imagine if you don't allow yourself to process in certain ways, you know, whatever your body is calling for you to do, you, you know, and these are times where we could, um, there's an opportunity also to have a little bit more heightened awareness you know, and trust in ourselves instead of looking outside of ourselves for what that answer is, um, you know, to turn inwardly and just sit with ourselves and listen. You know, what am, what is, what am I saying to myself right now? What, what is my body calling for me to do and allow that to occur so that we can more quickly move beyond where we're at right now, where we, where we don't want to be to where we're trying to go. You know, and um, yeah, so I just think it's a very important to listen to ourselves. It's super important. And, and as far as the screaming, man, I tell you, I, I have done I've done a couple of, of, you know, a few rounds of that. I've done that. <laughs> I listen to my madness. I, I go ahead and I listen to it. I remember being in my car, same thing, driving down the street. And I don't remember what I was going through. And I just let loose and I just screamed. And this was a few years back. And another time I drove my car. I said, okay, let me, let me just drive a little bit away from all this. I drove to the top of this, this hill, got out my car and just screamed. And you know, people need to understand that. We might not come in this life with an actual manual, but the body, we actually do have in a way a manual and, and, and that the kind of manual that we have requires that we what? That we tune in and we pay attention to what we are feeling. And in that moment, my body said, you know what? If you don't scream, you're going to be choking me. I'm not going to be getting enough oxygen. You're going to come down sick later. So go ahead and scream. (laughs) And basically, that's that's what it was saying. I mean, so so you go ahead and who cares? Even if somebody saw you, so what? They need to scream too. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 
And, and yeah, just, um, you know, I know that you and I will probably be talking, you know, a couple of days from now um, with people. But in terms of, um, you know, the health side of things and people really not, uh, well, a lot more people are, uh, you know, becoming aware and accepting of, you know, how we're feeling on the inside, what we're thinking, how we're feeling is always impacting our physical health. Um, by the time the symptom arises, uh, enough for you to say, hmm, I noticed that and I'm going to go to the doctor and have the doctor tell me, you know, some diagnosis, something was already occurring in the unseen, in the thought process, in the emotional state to begin with. And we just decide, you know, oh, uh, I can, I can uh, get over that. I can push that to the side. I was just speaking to a young lady a couple days ago, and she had said out of her mouth, um, you know, I'm not going to cry, you know, that her, that she was hearing herself say, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. And I said, oh, that's very interesting because you just told me that that's what you need to do. <laughs> By virtue of the fact that you just brought that up, your body's telling you that's exactly what you need to do, but you're, de- you're, you're saying you're not going to do what your body is telling you you need to do. It's and a release. I know that unless you just said it, that's you know. Right. <laughs> yes, it's a release, and that's what people need to realize. It's you know, it's a release. It's like a, re- a release valve, uh, whether it be the screaming or the crying. Exactly. Exactly. And so, um, the 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 even the crying. Um, I've had that where, you know, you sometimes you have no idea why you're crying and and I remember doing that crying and right when I'm crying I'm going I don't know why I'm crying and then I start laughing you know so <laughs> and, and and it's things like that where where somebody would go okay you're nuts but I have talked to other people that um people who are free to uh allow these things that that we're speaking about to allow our bodies to to be natural and to do what it needs to do to keep us healthy. But yeah, crying and then laughing. Uh, another thing too, Lisa, I, I wanted to uh, bring this up because we were talking about even uh, grief to some degree and pain. And I remember when my father died and my mother, um, he, he passed at, at the house and she, you know, was in the room the whole time, just sort of being there waiting for him to make his transition and uh after all of that happened and we were sitting and talking and she was crying and then we said something funny. We remembered something that my dad said or did and she started laughing so hard. I mean, the tears that were coming down her face were from the laughter <laughs> as opposed to the, the, the pain. And that was an incredible uh release. And, you know, so, so it sort of goes back and forth. So it's allowing yourself to be able to do that. I always remember that. Absolutely. That's incredible. Yeah. And, and speaking of grief, um, you know, um, when, uh, we've talked about this before, you know, upon my, I know that's not what this program is about, but upon my exit, you know, from religion, um, you know, I went through a grieving, uh, period. And I was not aware that that's what it was, but I would, I would just cry, uh, out of nowhere. I, I had no, you know, this, that pro, that had never happened to me before. Um, where I would just be in the middle of doing something and all of a sudden I would just start crying. And, um, you know, I went and I spoke to a psychologist because it was happening so often. Um, you know, that it, that it was pronounced to me in my mind. And I said, I, I want to speak to someone objectively about, you know, what the heck is going on. And, um, you know, just to sit and talk and be able to, you know, talk about it and then just talk about, I was talking about a lot of different things, at least in my mind I was as I was talking to her. And when I went to leave, I said, what do you think's going on? And she said, I think that you're grieving. I'm, I think you're grieving from leaving the church, from, you know, when you left the church. And um, she said, because every time you talk about that, you start crying. And I was like, oh, my goodness. That 
I could feel how true that was for me because, you know, uh, you had asked if I, if there were a sense of guilt, you know, when I, uh, you know, left that whole thing and the relationships and the community. And, you know, I had not thought about all of that. I was just thinking, I'm free, I'm, you know. Right. <laughs> but I, I had not processed yet all of the other things that came along with that, you know, and as this is going right back to what we were talking about in the very beginning of the call, uh, where with everything, it doesn't matter what it is or what it's called. If something becomes familiar to you, and with that familiarity, there are people, there's, um, you know, perhaps there's even a specific type of smell in the air, there's a time frame, there's a, a time of day associated with it. There's a uh, certain uh, uh, processes that you're going through in your home as you're preparing for whatever it is. You know, and again, this is no matter what it is. And then all of a sudden you're not doing that anymore. Um, the body or for everyone, what that looks like, how your body is going to process you know, that no longer being present inside of you is going to be different for everybody. You know, if there is no blanket, just like you were saying, there are no rules. There is no blanket. Okay, one step one, this. Step two, this. You know, I mean, generally there might be. I don't know. Um, but to tell, you know, everybody that this is the way it's going to go for you, no. that That's. You know, no. Well, it, that's different. more pressure. It, it cre yeah. actually it creates more pressure because a person wants to uh, adhere to what they believe to be the protocols, and when we can't meet what we think to be the protocols, we become disappointed in ourselves, and 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 then there is even more guilt. Um, yeah, uh, Lisa, I, I let me give out the station ID and let everybody know who we're speaking mm -hmm. with in case they've just tuned in. Uh, well, you do know that you're listening to KPFK 90.7 FM in Southern California, 98.7 in Santa Barbara, 93.7 in San Diego, 99.5 in Ridgecrest and China Lake, and streaming live at kpfk.org. And you are listening to The Expansion Zone with Sonia Barrett, and that would be me. My guest today is Lisa Scott. She is the creator of... Um, uh, what is, what are you the creator of, uh, here? <laughs> She's the creator of, oh, leverage your pain and leverage your values, uh, and yeah. so much more. And Lisa, I would like to also make sure that you mention where people can get this, this free ebook. Would you tell us about that and, and the website also? Absolutely. My website is lisascott.org. And the um, the free ebook is on my website actually. So if you go to my website and you scroll down the page a little bit, about midway through or so, you're going to see um, two ebooks. But we're talking specifically about when you've tried everything else except yourself. Six steps to move beyond your past experiences and programs and step into your own. And that book actually, um, I decided to write down. Uh, the process that I went through, I, I actually didn't know that there were six steps, but mm -hmm. I just, you know, and, and again, for everybody, things are different, but when I stopped and I thought about um, the space and time where I first, 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 first became aware of my thoughts, you know, prior to this space and time, I would say, you know, just like with everybody, I was functioning on autopilot. And this was um, not long. I, I, I don't recall exactly how long it was after I had left the church, um, but there was a time where I was in the basement of my home, and I was going through some physical, um, you know, uh, ailments, uh, migraine headaches, uh, not trusting myself, just all kind of stuff was happening. And um, frankly, I thought that it was just going to keep being that way. You know, I, I thought, you know, okay, I'm feeling these feelings, but, you know, what am I going to do? You know, whatever, you know, it just is what it is. Um, but one day I just got so sick and tired. Like, I just got so frustrated with this feeling inside of my body. Like, it was just, it, it was just a constant state of, I'll call it annoyance, um, that was, 
you know, manifesting itself in various ways. And the, the biggest way was a migraine headache. Oh, my goodness. It was just, oh. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, I just got so sick and tired of it. And just one day I'm in my basement and I just became consciously aware of my thoughts. And I heard so clearly, Sonia, that with the thoughts that have brought you to this space, I'm going to show you how to use those thoughts to bring you back out. And, mm, and I know now that that was, that was me talking to me because I was sick and tired. <laughs> and, um, but that's what I heard. And when I heard it, I was like, okay. <laughs> like, okay. But the biggest thing was that I was aware of that thought. I, prior to that, you know, thoughts are just reeling around in your head and you're just kind of moving along like, you know, robotic or auto, you know, without conscious awareness. And when I heard that, I became aware. So uh, what I, uh, you know, after listening, I said, okay, well, I don't have anything to lose, you know. Um, so I started to uh, key in on my thoughts. And what I noticed was that I, I said, okay, I, I noticed a, a thought. I had a thought and I could feel the energy that would go through my body as related to the thought that I was thinking. And when I felt that, I said, oh, my goodness. I, I just had this correlating emotional response to this thought. So if that is what's happening, if I can have a thought and then the emotion would kick in and correlate with the thought, then let me let me try having this other thought. And I would have another thought, you know, uh, let's just say positive versus negative, you know, my perception, um, and see how that feels. So I, I I coined the phrase for myself. I became a little scientist of myself and began to investigate how this all works, or at least at that space and time, how it was working. Right. And um, so I, I threw out another thought, and I noticed the shift in my body. And I said, oh, my goodness, like, you know, so I began to be more consciously aware of my thoughts and more intentional about what I was thinking versus allowing uh, thoughts to just, uh, you know, flood my mind and me have no control over them or no, uh, point, you know, uh, intention behind them. And as I noticed, uh, as I began to do that, I, by the fact that I was feeling so much better on the inside and thinking so much better on the inside, um, I didn't need to affect anything on the outside of me. In other words, I, I didn't need to control anything that was going on outside of me. It began to shift and change right before my eyes. And it was because of how I had changed, but it wasn't like me having to worry about it. You know what I mean? It, there was no worry associated. There was just me being consciously aware of what I was thinking and, you know, taking ownership of that. And uh, my my relationship with my marriage started to shift. Uh, my friendships, I began to understand, you know, um, or the ones that were, I guess, no longer serving where I was at at that point in time began to go away. I, I didn't need to worry about, uh, you know, whether I needed to kick somebody to the curb or not. They just went away. <laughs> they, <know? laughs> they automatically kicked themselves <laughs> to the curb. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I, I just one day I was sitting and I, I went back through that process in my head of, of, of what occurred, and I said, I'm going to write this down, you know, and that's where when you've tried everything else except yourself uh, came from. Yeah, that's powerful, and and I I can so relate. Um, I'll I'll throw this this out there <laughs> real quickly too. This is this is a, a story. This is something that happened to me again, you know, many years ago. And uh, the one thing that we know can be painful is love and relationships, um, intimate relationships. And uh, I, I have gone through this really painful, painful. Um, breakup. And yeah. I was, you know, just as you said, with the thoughts just running crazy, just running wild, and you, you just feel like you can't stop them. And, uh, I was, I actually felt the thoughts, I felt this sucking the life out of me because it was on auto 
And the more the thoughts would come up as, as to what happened is the more the thoughts would come up and other thoughts would come up. And I was in, you know, I was in deep and it was just taking over and I was trying to work and uh, it was really hard going into work every day. And I, I, you know, as I felt it literally sucking the life out of me, I remember one day just getting up and saying, you know what, there is no one worth me losing my life force over because I realized it was my life force. You know, I felt like it was aging me. And I remember saying that there is no one. And with that, I made a decision that I would do it, take it a step at a time, you know, for an hour. It's like I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't think about it for, you know, for two hours. I mean, and I, I just kept inching myself along. Of course, I didn't have the understanding that I do now, but uh, I remember taking that approach to gradually um, stop myself from being sucked in. And, you know, eventually I was able to pull myself out, but I see how people get, get pulled in by their emotions. And it's, it, it, yeah, it, it's really tough. And some people don't get out of it. Yeah, yeah, because those, you know, you, you talked about it. You said, you know, in terms of the, the thoughts that were all over the place. And, and same with me. It is, we're, we're so unconscious at that point of the, um, how the momentum of one storyline, you know, that we're telling ourselves that painful story is is begetting another story and then another story and then another story. You know, so it's like all these these storylines that we're playing in our minds that we're not conscious of. And, you know, thank goodness for becoming, you know, consciously aware of it because, you know, then we are able to gradually, and I like how you said that, gradually, because that's that's the other thing is, you know, allowing ourselves that gradual, you know, and not have not feeling like you have to rush yourself into anything uh, again, which would be pressuring yourself uh, into some controlled. You're trying to control the outcome, and you're. It's just not going to happen. It's it's just not going to happen. It's going to backfire. You can try if you want to, but it's not going to happen. It's true. Because we're, you know, we're trying to control the outcome and we cannot control the outcome. What we, what we can control is becoming aware of what we're thinking and what we're saying to ourselves and, and, you know, gradually allowing ourselves to accept something that makes us feel better as opposed to the thoughts that we were currently accepting that make us feel worse. You know. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, also to remind um, the listeners, according to everything that we're saying here, is we have to also remember how our, our brain looks for patterns and that we are creatures of habit. Um, everything we do is pretty habitual. And even a uh, an emotion, when you, you get stuck in a particular way of feeling, it becomes part of that habitual pattern and and the brain just you know and the, and the mind everything just starts to cycle around that and that's what makes it so hard to to get out of i mean it becomes chemical um yeah. you know in in your body so when somebody's depressed or something like that and somebody says well, why don't you you know they can just stop being depressed this is part of what happens and it becomes mm -hmm. a normal um mm -hmm. you know to to a great degree to that uh, person yeah, it, it's it's an addiction. Mm -hmm. It becomes an addiction because I I remember feeling a um you know as I was paying attention I I don't remember what thought it was but it was a thought I was thinking and I could feel the adrenaline release in my body I could feel it <laughs> and I was like oh my goodness like this is crazy this but this is it, it's actually not because this is how we're we're functioning this is what we're doing it's just that we're not aware of the feeling that is happening within our body but you know to to be able to stop and say okay wait a minute I have this this gnawing continuous little uh, feeling in my in my gut that just and, and then allow yourself to decide what does that feel like to you does it feel good you know or does it feel bad or does it feel you know I don't like to use those words but, but uncomfortable it, mm -hmm. yeah uh, there you go is it uncomfortable or is it comfortable 
And if it's not comfortable um, to just, first of all, allow yourself to even acknowledge that it's there, number one, and, and that's what, you know, so many areas of the body like um, shoulder pain, like you, you, thought you might find yourself throw your, your hand up to your shoulder because you need to um, work out a kink in your shoulder or something because you're just feeling this, this nagging feeling right there that, again, is uncomfortable. But we, we tend to just keep it moving. You know what I mean? You, fe- you felt the feeling, but you keep on moving. But it's like, no, we're, what we're talking about is you felt that feeling and you've become consciously aware of that feeling. And now you are able to bring yourself to a place where you're deciding whether it's comfortable or not. And if it is not comfortable, you are now going to become consciously aware of what it is that you're thinking that is causing you, that you're participating in, that is causing that shoulder pain, so that you can now make another decision about a different thought that's going to bring comfort into your body so that that shoulder pain can go away. That's what we're talking about. So we're, we're not talking about just noticing that you have a ping or a pang or a headache or a, you know, a, 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 a uncomfortable emotion inside of your body and keeping it moving until it becomes a physical ailment that is a symptom that now you have to go to the doctor and get some type of diagnosis for. We're talking about taking responsibility and, and, and knowing that you have it within yourself to pay attention to these things and be aware and, and make a different choice. Oh, absolutely. Wonderfully said. Uh, yes, we, we have, um, we're equipped. Let's just put it that way. We are equipped more than we have been led to believe. Um, obviously, a lot of the programming that we've had since childhood is about externalizing, is about looking outside, which is obviously why we tend to uh, feel guilt um, and and concern when we don't feel like we're complying with the status quo, with with you know with the accepted what is accepted, because you know mm-hmm. we're we're just not taught to or encouraged to really go inside and to um, do what is best, truly best for us. The other thing too, Lisa, is that when we do what is best for us, um, we'd be surprised to realize that we're actually doing for other people when we really zone in on what is working for us. You don't have to be a martyr. (laughs) What is best for me right now? (laughs) Hanging out with you is not best right now. (laughs) Exactly. it's, It's amazing how when we stop trying to figure out and stop trying to control the outcome of things, which is what's causing so much of the momentous, you know, uh, uncomfortable feelings inside of our bodies, and we bring it back into self and say, you know what, um, I'm going to pay more attention to what's going on with me. And just like you said, Sonia, everything else, you, you know, it, it just amazes me how your the effort that you were previously trying to put into those things outside of yourself to shift them, change them, change that, and all of this, they just they just start flowing in a in a manner where you're looking at it like, wait a minute, I've been trying to do that, you know, prior to, to knowing what I know now, I've been trying to do that over there for years. And now here it just comes like this so effortlessly and and not because I had to try to do anything, simply by virtue of, you know, becoming more harmonious and comfortable within myself. You know, the things that are going on around me become more comfortable and harmonious. And it's not to say that you're not going to experience anything. That We're not saying we're floating on a cloud somewhere. <laughs> but we are saying that when when things arise, we, we, just like you said, we're equipped with the tools within ourselves. And we know that. We know that we are qu- equipped with the tools within ourselves to bring us back to balance. Absolutely. And uh, I'm going to throw this in before uh, we we run low on time. But I think this is also very important is feelings of um, lack of accomplishment for the year. People tend to get really caught up in that space as well, not feeling as if they 
Um, they accomplished, you know, the things that they wanted to. They're at this certain age. All of that is really social yeah. protocol. And it, and it really needs to boil down to you and, and, and all about you and your passions and not how it looks to the outside world. Take the pressure exactly. off yourself. Well, you know, with along with that, um, I I recognize that a lot of people haven't determined what um, what they want their life, their own lives to look and feel like to begin with. We have There's about been... we have about six sixty seconds or so. Oh, okay, okay. So I'll stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can finish that in thirty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we just just paying attention to what we deem you know, this thing called success, it, you know, we're, we've been looking outside of ourselves for what that looks like when we need, we never had the opportunity to stop and pay attention to what we considered it to be to begin with. What's your website again? It is lisascott.org. Oh, that's real easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and, you know, everything we've talked about today, I sure hope it helps to create some, um, some release and, and make things a little bit lighter for someone out there. And the laughter. Okay, you haven't heard Lisa and I laugh. Okay, I've been very good about laughing too much on air, but I am a laugher. <laughs> Anybody who knows me know that I'm a laugher. So, uh, and it's, it's so healing. It's so healing. Yeah. Well, let's see. I think, uh, I think we are close there on, on wrapping it up, but I am trying to see. If, uh, we've got, okay, we've got a minute left. What else can we throw in real quick? Cause we could throw in a whole lot, but I don't want, I don't want us to get so carried away. We can't get to finish our thought. Um, exactly. But I, I think we said it all, Sonia. All right. Finding clues in your pain. That, that, that is, a big thing right here that we've talked about today is finding those clues in your pain and feeling comfortable enough to go ahead and listen to yourself and go, okay, uh, what do I want? What do I want? Do it for me. And then when I do it for me, hey, everybody else will benefit from it. So, there you go. yeah, very awesome. All right. So I think we are there. And I, I just want to say thank you so much to the listening audience. I, I love that you tune in all the time and uh, love the show. Thanks to our guest, Lisa Scott, and to my engineer, uh, D'Angelo Jones. Uh, visit the expansionzone.com for the newsletter or to check out the archive. And also my website, my personal website, uh, therealsoniabarrett.com, and of course, Facebook and all the other social media platforms. Remember to live life to its fullest and question everything. Until next time, see you then. One